verse 19. So I sung that song, and um, I sung it the way it is on the album for a reason today, because sometimes people hear you sing a song, and they think somebody did something to it. You know, they think, they think you doctored it up, or they think you, you put those notes in the, in the machine or something like that. Uh, Tanya told me, she said, Pastor, I ain't never heard your voice sound like that before. I said, because I ain't never had to. I ain't going to be singing that high for nothing. I got to preach. <laughs> Um, but um, we thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. If you got to say, I got it. This message is only for people who are seeking revelation. If you got everything you need, go ahead and go to sleep. I'll be here when you wake up. But if you have something that you need interpreted so that you can have clarity and you on your way up, then this message is for you. It's for you. I can tell. It's for you. Got it. I just please identify yourself so I will know I'm not even going to look at anybody I'm not preaching to today. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. Then there was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Get ready for God to reveal something tonight. Tonight. Mark it on your calendar, put it in your iPhone, give yourself an alert. Something that you have been battling over for the last few years before you go to sleep tonight. Tonight, there is a revelation. Somebody say tonight. I don't want to play with y'all today. Who came to church? Then Daniel. Bless the God of heaven. So God revealed it to Daniel at night, and he didn't wait till Sunday to praise him. That night. So you're not going to save your shout until we come back next week. When you get here next week, you're going to tell me how you tore your living room up, worshiping and praising God. Tonight, some of y'all who live on the second, third, and fourth floor, you better warn your neighbors. Tonight, you're going to hear some stumping. Blessed be the name of God for whoever, forever and ever, for wisdom and might are who? Yes. And here is my text, verse 21. And he changeth the times and the season. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. And I'm going to finish this before I finish, give you the title. You know why some of us are still waiting on the answer? It's because we don't know understanding. God says, I cannot send the vision to people who have low understanding. You may have an average IQ, but your understanding has to be high. Have you ever seen a child, they can't communicate what they mean, but they understand what you're saying. God says, I don't need you to, I don't need you to be able to express it. I just need you to be able to understand it. Yeah. I want to talk about for the next few moments on this subject matter, power moves. Touch everybody on your way down to your seat and say, power's getting ready to move. Power moves. God bless you. Thank you so much. Power moves, power moves, power moves, power moves. Can I give you the background so you understand where we are? The book of Daniel is really a um, theological expose uh, concerning the shift of a group of individuals who would be brought out of their homeland and subjugated uh, to Babylonian captivity. Babylon, watch this, geographically on your map today, Babylon is the same place that was formerly known as Iraq, or formerly known as Babylon, currently known as Iraq. The same thing that happened in the days of Nebuchadnezzar happened in our day 
when America launched a war called Operation Iraqi Freedom. If you remember, Saddam Hussein uh, was, whether falsely or not, convicted of having weapons of mass destruction. Um, he was a dictator, and in the same way Babylon fell, Iraq fell. So the same thing that you witnessed on TV, remember when Saddam Hussein had that statue and they pulled it down? The same thing happened in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Remember, he had set up a golden image. And that's what got the Hebrew boys thrown into the fiery furnace is because they, were, they would not bow down and worship when the king demanded that they worship. But what they understood is something that I hope you'll understand, that you should never bow at standing up time. It wasn't time for them to bow. It was, it was time for them to stand up for what they believed in. And they believed in it so much they said, King, we're not going to bow. And you can do what you want to do and we'll be fine. But if not, our God is still able. How many of you know that God is still able even when you don't get what you want? You receiving what you prayed for doesn't prove that God is able. Because God answers in a multiplicity of ways. God says yes, he says no, and he says not yet. God says yes, God says no, and God says not yet. And all three of those are answers. And let me tell you, you don't want to know when God says yes. But you definitely don't want to yes when God says no. And if God says not yet, get ready because the power is getting ready to move. Some of you are in your not yet season. God didn't say no. He just said not yet. Because he's doing some things so that when he does reveal your dream, you will know understanding. There is nothing worse than being in a situation where you don't understand. God says, I'm waiting on your understanding to catch up with what you're getting ready to stand under. <laughs> I'm waiting on your, un see, you, the only thing that you understand is the thing that you stand under. I, I don't need you to have a stand over mentality. I need you to have a stand under because I send understanding to those who are under, humble. If you are humble, if you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. The Bible says in John 1, to those who believe, to them gave he what? Power to be the sons of God. They believed. So in other words, they understood who he was. They could not get the power to be sons and daughters until they understood who he was. Because if you give power without understanding, you are sanctioning tragedy. God help me. If, if you give your child the keys to your car just because they can see over the steering wheel, they may have position, but they don't have power. Are you with me so far? And, and some of you all have children who are 16, 17 years old, but if they don't take the course, if they don't learn how to drive, they may positionally be old enough to drive the vehicle, but they don't have the power or the authority to drive it. Why? Because in order to do that, you have to go through a certain set of things in order to be given that power. Because when you give a child power without experience, they cause tragedy. The same thing goes on in the spirit realm. God says, I could give you the power to cast out demons and devils, but I can't give you that power until you get rid of the ones you have. You, you see, are y'all listening to me? Do you know how many people are asking God for the power to lay hands on and to call demons out of people and to get their house straight? But God says, if I give you the power to, to call out demons uh, in your children and to call out demons on your workplace, my question for you is, is will you use the power efficiently enough to even call the ones out of you that you have? Because most people will cast demons out of everybody else, but they'll leave their demons inside of them. Y'all going to help me in here today. So, so the Bible says that, that Nebuchadnezzar went and hired a group of guys to interpret his dream. Y'all going to walk with me today or y'all sleepy? 
he hired a group of people to, to interpret his dream. And neither one of them, watch this, could interpret the dream. They were professional people who were known to have the ability to interpret dreams. Otherwise, he would have never hired them. They must have had a proven track record that they could do what he was hiring them to do because if they had not done it before, as a king, he would not have been smart to hire them to do it again because you don't let people practice in serious areas of your life. God help me in this place today. You, you don't let people practice in serious areas of your life. If God told you that it is time to go to the next level and you know you need a godly mate in your life, don't let nobody practice on you while you are trying to go. This is going to be a rough one today. Some of you all are frustrated because you're with somebody who's practicing, but you don't hire people who are practicing. He hired people who were practicing, and they could not give him the interpretation. There was one guy that he overlooked that had the power to give him what he did not authorize him to do. Out of all of the men who were there, it was the person that was overlooked that had the power to interpret the dream. Are y'all with me today? I'm going to keep saying it because what I want you to see is that there is a difference between the person who had has the position and the person who has the power. They had the position of dream interpreter, but Daniel had access to the one who had the power to interpret the dream. I want to talk to some of you all in here today who has given up because you don't have the position. You don't have the position because God says, I gave you the power. And if you will exercise your power, the position will be given to you. Come on and help me in here today. Don't be afraid, don't be insecure, don't be upset about the people who have the position. Your boss may have the position, but if you'll stay, if you'll stay patient, God says, I'm getting ready to do a power move. You'll get this sermon before it's getting ready to end, because what I mean by power moves in this sermon is I'm not talking about you doing something. I'm not talking about you making a power move. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that power moves. <laughs> Come on, help me, church. Power moves. It doesn't always stay in the same position. It comes to they that wait on the Lord. God, help me in this church today. If you would just wait until your turn, if you would stop trying to cut other folks' throats so you can come up, if you would stop trying to keep people down so you can be lifted, God says, in due time and in due season, I am the one that changed the time, and I'm the one that changes the season, and you don't have to have the title right now. All you got to do is have access to the power. Power. I wish I had somebody who's been underlooked, overlooked, and underserved. Somebody who's been wondering when it's going to be my time. God sent me on assignment on this Sunday morning to alert you that the power is moving. Touch three people and say the power is moving. The power is moving. And not only is the power moving, but guess what? It's coming in your direction. It's coming in your direction. Do me a favor because you got some people on your road that don't believe it. Excuse them and say, can you go to the bathroom for the next 45 minutes. I need everybody on my row in alignment with my vision because the power is getting ready to move and I don't want the power to obscure me because I have somebody on my row that doesn't believe that there is a shift in the atmosphere. I need 500 people who believe that there is a wave and a wind and a shaking and a rumbling and the power is getting ready to transfer. Slap somebody say I'm next in line. And it doesn't look like it right now because I'm being overlooked. And it doesn't look like it because you don't know my name because my, you call me Daniel, but if I had time to tell you, my mama didn't name me Daniel, my mama named me Belshazzar. You don't understand, you are calling me by the wrong name. You've been calling me failure because I've been failing. You've been calling me single because I don't have a husband or a wife. You've been calling me poor because I don't have money. You've been calling me by the wrong name. I'm just waiting on the power to move. I'm waiting on the power to move. I got a husband, but he ain't came yet. I got a wife, but she hasn't arrived yet. I got money. I just can't spend it yet. I'm waiting on God to move the power. Oh, God. Somebody say, God, move the power. The Bible lets us know that Daniel is a praying man. I wish I had time to just preach about prayer. Because if it's one thing, church folk don't do no more. Oh, God, y'all don't pray no more. Oh, how do I know you don't pray? Because if you were praying, the devil wouldn't be in your business as much as he is. 
if you will rebuke that lying tongue devil and let him know that you can go somewhere else but you can't stand here if you would have a prayer life but people don't understand what prayer is anymore because prayer isn't God can I have God will you do oh and here's our favorite prayer God if you get me out of this I will never anybody ever prayed that sacred prayer Lord get me out of it this time I promise you I'll never do it again that's not prayer our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us as we forgive those who have trespassed against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power the glory forever amen and that ain't even a prayer what that is is actually a structure for prayer our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name in other words you ain't prayed until you praised Oh, I wish I had somebody in here who understood that prayer doesn't start with a question. It starts with a hallelujah. Somebody in here, if you need something from God, God needs something from you because the Bible says that he revealed to Daniel in a night vision and then Daniel blessed the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his, I wish I had 500 people who didn't even know what you needed yet but would just start blessing God because you reap what you sow. Matter of fact, look up to God and say, I'm about to sow a blessing so I can reap a blessing. Hallelujah anyhow. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my finances. Thank you for my health. Will somebody bless the Lord in this place? Daniel got blessed in a night vision. Can I help you understand that sometimes you have to wait until the night before he shows up? Come here, I'm talking to you. He shows up in the dark. Why does God show up in the dark? I wondered when I woke up this morning went to the restroom how many of y'all get out of the bed you know where that corner of that bed is so you got to kind of be <laughs> who knows what I'm talking about if you don't hit your toe on that bed enough I get out of the bed like a cat burglar I be I drag my foot to make sure I don't hit the toe you know why what do we do in the darkness Why does God show up in the darkness? Is because we move too much in light. In darkness, we stand still. Notice he did not show up for Paul, Saul of Tarshish, on the road to Damascus until he put scales on his eyes because sometimes God has to cause a darkness. In order for him to get Eve out of Adam, he had to put him in a deep sleep. He had to cause a darkness. In order to reveal to Joseph that Mary was indeed pregnant by the Holy Ghost, he had to cause a darkness. Why? Because we have too many opinions in the light. We have too many options in the light. We have too many thoughts in the light. So sometimes God will flip the switch so you'll trust Oh, God, touch somebody and say, that's why it's dark in your life, because God is trying to create a situation where you'll stop moving and stop talking and stop thinking and stop giving your opinion. And they that wait on the Lord, weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Slap three people and say, that's why it's night in my life. That's why it's night in my life. Notice that Paul and Silas didn't hear from Jesus until midnight. Because in the daytime, Pilate can give you his opinion. In the daytime, you'll trust your own experience, Moses. So I, I, I can't always give you a pillar of cloud in the day. Sometimes I have to flip the script and give you a pillar of fire by night because I want to see if you'll follow me when you can't see. Oh, God. Are you here with me today? All of them were hired. None of them could produce do you understand that just because somebody was picked over you doesn't mean they were the choice? <laughs> no, good God Almighty. If you would just wait on Israel to find out they made a mistake, if you'll just wait, Israel, to find out that you did pick a king and I gave you your pick, but that wasn't my choice. Y'all ain't here with me today. Sometimes God will give you your pick, but it ain't his choice. 
I'll give you Saul, but David is what I had for you. But, if you. but you couldn't make it through the night because you saw everybody else going up and you saw everybody else having kingdoms and you saw everybody else building tabernacles and temples and you saw everybody else with gold and you saw everybody else with stature and you wanted to keep up with Roman. You wanted to keep up with the Joneses. You tried to keep up with your neighbors, but you couldn't wait. You couldn't stay in your apartment until I could give you a mansion. You had to go and get a house before it was your season because you didn't wait on me to change the times and the seasons. Jesus. I came to tell 500 of y'all, if you'll just wait, God will make your blessing 10 times bigger than the one you think you're about to get. The first thing that power requires is that you learn how to receive it. Don't miss this. Point number one, you've got to learn how to receive power. A lot of people want it, don't know how to receive it. A lot of people have trouble receiving a lot of things. How many of you all, be honest, you have trouble receiving compliments? Somebody say, oh, you look good. No, not that good. <laughs> Come on now. We're, we're so used to not being able to receive that even when we're being complimented, we're self-deprecating. You losing weight. I don't feel it well. I can't even tell. Girl, child, what? Tell me. Come on, y'all. Be honest. Show me your hand if I'm talking right. We have trouble receiving, but then get an attitude if we don't receive. How many ladies went and got your hair done? Walked in the house and your man didn't say nothing? Oh. I went and did all this and you just ain't gonna say nothing. Did you even notice that my nails weren't pink no more? Because we have trouble what? <laughs> That's a testimony offering right there, Jesus. I'm gonna go on this side of the church. I don't know what's going on over there. Shonda's sister said, watch it now, brother, watch it. <laughs> we have trouble receiving power. Nebuchadnezzar received power. He made people bow. Jesus received power. He bowed. The difference in what you will do when you receive the power will determine what happens to your kingdom. Whatever you're building... Whatever you are sacrificing for, whatever you're putting together, will power go to your head or will it go to your hand? And will you use that hand to help somebody else or will you use that power to help yourself? Because that will determine if your kingdom lasts forever and ever or will it crumble? He is offering Nebuchadnezzar an opportunity to last longer than the shelf life that is currently attributed to him, but it's going to be determined by how he receives power. Are you with me so far? So watch this. If you read the Bible, the Bible says in Daniel 2, and I'm still introducing this, and I'm going to be done here in a minute. The Bible says that in Daniel 2, he starts off by requesting something from God. A few verses. He spends the rest of the chapter praising God, a few chapters asking, few verses asking, the rest of the chapter praising. Who's guilty of doing a whole lot of asking and a whole little bit of worship? If I, if I came and listened to your prayer, I bet you it would sound something like this. God, I need you to, and if you could, and God, I just need you to. And Lord, if you, if you don't do it all, just do some. And Lord, I need you. And Lord, ain't nobody like you. I searched all over. You need to. I need you to have. God, would you please? You ain't said thank you for what he did last week. I haven't said how. You, you just skip right over the fact. Because you've got to understand that you can make your request be made known unto God. But that has to be precipitated and preceded by a worship lifestyle. Worship is not something you do in church on Sunday. Worship is how you do everything you do. 
I'm not trying to shout you. I'm trying to get you to understand this. If you are an usher and when you hand out an envelope, that's called worship. If you are behind the camera and you're making sure that people at home can see, that's called worship. If you count money, that's called worship. Everything you do, you have to do it under God. You've got to learn how to receive power. Daniel says, the reason why I'm in the powerful position is because I understand that I stay in the praise position. And if I stay in the praise position, I stay in the power position. And the more I bless God, the more God blesses me. And I don't just bless God because I need a blessing. I bless the Lord at all times and his praise is always in my mouth. Some of y'all are sitting there right now and ain't said hallelujah yet, but when it's altar call time, you're going to bring your prayers and your problems to the altar. How about if you're praised during a sermon, how about you might come to the altar and the miracle may already be up here? How about if you would put your blessing up front, God will put his blessing on the back end. I'm going to wait until somebody understands this sermon. You don't thank God because you got the car. You thank God that while you're walking, he's able to provide. You don't thank God that he healed you of cancer. You thank God that even though they found a spot on your lungs, by the time you get back to the hospital, it won't be there anymore. If you oppress God up front, God will bless you on the back. Because in the exchange, the only blesser that cannot be trusted is us. You have to have a prayer lifestyle. The way you receive power is to give praise. And what is happening in the church is we have to get lights, camera, and actions to get people into a posture of worship. What I wish I could do is preach this, I bet you, if I preached a sermon right at 11, you walked in and I was preaching, you'd be thrown off because it doesn't fit your mold. One day at 11 o'clock, I was just sitting up here at 11, I just said, all right, turn to Daniel 2 and start preaching. Y'all be like, what a praise and worship, he done fired everybody? I think some of the best moments we have in church is when I can't get to the sermon. Because people are in a position of worship and adoration, but most of us are afraid of worship because you can't be cool in worship. Uh, you can't be trying to preserve your hairdo from yesterday. Come on, this got to last, not when, the, not when the Holy Ghost show up. Oh, do I have somebody here? Listen, you worship God until you sweat that track out and, and trust God for another one. Do I have somebody in here? Do I have some? I don't care how much you pay for your mascara. I don't care how much your blush costs. I dare you to praise God. Somebody here knows what it is like to cry that makeup off of your face. Somebody in here knows what it's like to take those heels off of your feet and give God some praise. As a matter of fact, I'm going to wait to see if I can get 180 people not wait on me to tell you what to do. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my natural reaction is to give God glory. Now you release yourself in this place. And you begin to give God some glory because when praises go up, now come on, give him worship. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. But you could have did that for Drake yesterday. You could have did that for Taylor Swift. I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I need somebody to release a sound of worship in here. Not because you got a car, not because you got a miracle, but because God saved your soul and put you under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now somebody shout hallelujah. Real worship ain't stuff connected. Real worship recognizes that if I don't have a place to lay my head, I got a mansion in heaven. Do I have somebody who just want? I don't want to pump and prime you. I don't want to push you. I want you to think about three things that God has done for you today. And just worship him. Open up your mouth and worship him. I didn't say clap. I said worship him. I didn't say applaud. I said worship him. I didn't say act like you at a concert. You are in the presence of a mighty God. Open up your mouth and worship. It's cute, but you ain't slaying no demons. It's cute, but you ain't put the devil to flight. It's cute, but you haven't shattered a stronghold. There has to be a sound. Genesis says that you have to use your voice like a trumpet. 
Good God Almighty. He says you have to use your voice like a trumpet. I want you to act like you got an instrument in your voice. <laughs> and I want you to let the devil know I'm getting ready to use this trumpet because the walls are about to come down. The wall of poverty is coming down. The wall of guilt is coming down. The wall of shame is coming down. Open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. says, I'm under a king that I don't trust, but that king is under a king that I do trust. Some of you all are upset because you are too connected to people you don't trust. They just recently revealed to you that you can't trust them. Oh God, who am I talking to? Good God Almighty. I felt something just happened in the spirit. Oh, that Shabbat. I felt something happened in the spirit. Some of you all are frustrated because somebody just revealed to you that you can't trust them and they don't even know you just found out yet. And, and, and so what you're saying is, is you're getting ready to stop because you trust. God says, no, 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 no. Power moves. Don't worry if you're under somebody you don't trust because the person that you're under that you don't trust is under somebody you do trust. Slap somebody and say, turn it over to Jesus. God's getting ready to handle your auntie. God's getting ready to handle your boss. God's getting ready to handle your sister. God's getting ready to handle your brother. But you got to stay in a position of worship. Lighthouse, worship him. <laughs> Pastor Torrance, when you release, y'all stay on your feet. If I got to stand up, you can too. When you release that prophetic word that this was a year of expansion, the Lord arrested my attention. And I began to analyze the church. I said, where are we in giving? Good. Where are we, where are we in facility? Excellent. Where are we in elevation? Magnificent. Where are we in customer service and love? Good. Where are we in worship? Average at best. Because there's no way in the world that 3,000 people should be shouting and I can hear him on the front row. Whenever it's time for us to open up our mouth, we sound like a monotone church choir. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, and you see some people, as I'm telling you to open up your mouth and bless them, you're still doing this. You refuse to open up your mouth, and that's why God won't open up heaven. If you'll open up your mouth, God will, whoa, shut up, I shut. You're standing before an open heaven. Open up your mouth so God can open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. Open up your mouth. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, I feel something happening. I feel a shaking and a rumbling. I feel a shift in the atmosphere. I feel miracles in the atmosphere. Matter of fact, grab your neighbor by the hand and shout neighbor over the next 30 seconds. I'm going to shout until I lose my voice because I'm performing for the king. Every day will be like Sunday. Every month like the month of May. Open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Come on, come on. about to catch fire. Something's 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 about to catch fire. Fire in this house. Come on, Holy Ghost, have your way. Come on, Holy Ghost, have your way. A fresh wind, a fresh oil, a fresh moon. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. You just got ready to cross over to the holies of holies. You're still at the brazen altar. You're still by the table of showbread. You're still by the golden lampstand. You're still by the mercy seat. But you gotta come a little further, peek beyond the veil, and see the holies of holy. Release that hand and shout hallelujah. Do me a favor and look at your neighbor 
and say, neighbor, let's go down by the river. Look at them right in the eye and say, there's peace in that river. There is joy in that river. There's hope in that river. There are financial breakthroughs in that river. Shout it out. Yeah. somebody on this side give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor I've got the power to shift my family to shift the generation to break strongholds I feel something about to happen 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 I feel a shift I dare some of y'all just take a step to the left and then take another to the right because I want you to know you just took a step to the next dimension. Somebody shout, I'm leaving this place. I'm leaving this mindset. I'm leaving this feeling. I'm leaving this anxiety. Step into your destiny. Step into your breakthrough. Step to your miracle, shout it, yeah! Oh. I'm trying to leave y'all alone, but I felt something just happen. I dare a hundred of y'all to meet me at the altar. I dare you to meet me at the altar. There's a miracle with your name on it. I dare you to run and not be weary. I dare you to walk and not faint. They that wait on the Lord shall renew, renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not faint. Give a neighbor a high five and say, I got the power. I will never be broke another day in my life. I got the power. I won't be sick another day in my life. I've got the power. There's a glory in the room. There's a miracle in the room. Now I need you to make a declaration. Somebody shout, there's a miracle in the room. And I hate to be selfish, but it's got my name on it. 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 The power's moving. The power's moving. The power's moving. The power's moving. The head is becoming the tail. The bar is becoming the lender. The first is becoming the last. And the last is becoming the first. Because the power's moving. The power's moving. The power's moving. There's a shift, 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 there's a shift. Do you feel it? There's a rumbling hey! and a shaking. There's a rumbling and a shaking. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? There's a rumbling and a shaking. Do you feel it? There's a rumbling and a shaking. Do you feel it? There's a shift. Do you feel it? Shout it out.
The glory cloud is here. Keep worshiping. I had two options. Either I could teach you how to do it or I could show you how to do it. Keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I will bless the Lord at all times. I don't care if you're a church go or not worship. I don't care if you understand what we're doing now. It'll hit you. Open up your mouth. I don't care if you sold a dime bag last night. I don't care if you went to the club last night. I don't care if you got alcohol on your breath. Worship him. Don't you let your sin keep your mouth closed. I don't care if you slept in the wrong bed last night. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Don't you come before the king and be ashamed like he doesn't already know. Open up your mouth. The only person who's judging you are your friends, not your redeemer. Open up your mouth. There's no respect of person. I don't care what's going on. Open up your mouth. I don't care if you're struggling with your sexuality. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Let's go down to the river. Let's go down to the river. So we can hear this is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Go down to the river. You're doing this for an audience of one. You're not worried about who's in here. You're worried about the one who sits high. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, Hispanic or Asian, rich or poor, open up your mouth. Because when we all get to heaven, God won't ask you what color your skin was. He's not going to ask you what side of town you grew up on. I'm not going to hear him say, depart from me, for I never knew you. How do I get him to know me? Through my worship. I don't care if you're 16 or 61, open up your mouth. I don't care if you're in high school or if you're high, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Ain't no fake way to worship. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch my children because I can't help them, God. Touch my family because I need you. Touch my body because it's in pain. Touch my mind because it's confused. Touch my marriage is on the rocks. Touch my plans because they look like they're failing, God. Help me with my self-esteem because I'm on, my, on the brink of... Touch my business. You ain't done. You're not done. You're the one who said if you had 10,000 tongues, you wouldn't praise them enough. You only have one, so you got some work to do. You got some work to do. This ain't about a show. We're not playing. We're serious. We give 
you are. Come on and lift up those hands. The Lord. Whoa. 
what's your favorite song?
me pray over you and I'll let you go. God, we thank you today for who you are in your spirit. And thank you for these who are just sitting to wait on you to release them. And I pray, God, that in result of their patience, that you will release an anointing. God, I pray a blessing over every man, woman, and child that's in this building who just sat in attention and waited on you to give us orders, who didn't even know what was next but was just waiting on you. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then